Neanderthals got a bad rap for a long time. Artists drew them as sluggish, awkward, slumped over creatures holding clubs. People thought of them as dimwits. But there's been a bit of revisionary history as far as Neanderthal, probably because a lot of humans have Neanderthal DNA. And it's undeniable that they have a 1600 centimeter, cubic centimeter, cranial capacity, which is larger. That's on average, and that's larger than the average humans. The largest Neanderthal is 1,736 cubic centimeters, and that was found in a cave in Israel. And the reason it's probably so big, the average was 1,600, this was over 1,700, is because it was 5'10 in height, which is taller than the, a lot taller than the average Neanderthal, and taller now than the average human. So of course its brain is going to be bigger. So keep that in mind, 1,600 cubic centimeters, that's the average cranial capacity of a Neanderthal. Then jumping ahead to humans, the range is 900, which is, compare that 1,600 to modern human, the smallest of the range is 900 cubic centimeters, to 2,100. That's a lot bigger than Neanderthal, but that's not the average. The average is somewhere between 900 and 2,100. I'm going to do this in a future video, but can a Neanderthal woman be represented as beautiful? Can a Neanderthal man be represented as handsome? Do they always have to be awkward looking creatures? You can take that skull and put a nose on it, put flesh on it, and, and have a positive interpretation because the current interpretation is very wildly, and they can't all be right, and maybe none of them's right. In a future video, I'm going to be morphing a human, not just a skull, but a human into Neanderthal. And who do you want to see morphed into a Neanderthal? And I'm also going to do one of Joe Rogan. And who do you think I'm going to morph Joe Rogan into? Or what do you think? It's, it's not a person. Okay, so this is a representation of a 100% human skull. And since humans in Europe and Asia have under 5% allegedly Neanderthal DNA, I'm going to show you what, at least in this morph, 1% Neanderthal would look like. That's 1%. You can't tell any difference. Now I'm jumping up to 6%. Can you tell any difference here? That's 6%. Some people think the DNA tests for Neanderthal are not accurate. They say we have more than the amount scientists suspect us of having. Okay, I'm going to jump up to 10%. Still looks like a human skull. I don't see any Neanderthal in that. And that's, I mean, you can see a little increase in the brow ridge, but that's still within the human range. All right, I'm going to jump to 20%. There still doesn't look like much of a change, and that's 20%. The only thing I really see definitively is still on the brow ridge. I mean, he's losing a little bit of the forehead. Yeah, if that was a person, I'd say they're little, their forehead's a little low. But as far as the prognathicism in the mouth and the chin, it still resembles humans. Same with the nose, same with the eye sockets. All right, now I'm going to jump to 30%. Okay, I don't know what took place in those last 10%, but now it's starting to look like a Neanderthal. It jumped in that little amount. Maybe that still could be representative of a human, but that skull's having a, starting to have a bun in the back, and that forehead's getting really low. I don't know if any humans... Maybe there's a few in remote areas, but not many humans have a forehead that low. Yeah, that's starting to look Neanderthal. All right, 40%. Yeah, it looks like a lot like the 30%. Okay, now here's 50%. The forehead's really low, but I still think if someone had found something like this, they might say, well, they might say it's a hybrid. I don't know if they'd say it's still human. All right, 60%. It's starting to get a little bun in the back of the skull. The teeth are sticking forward a little bit more. It still has a bit of a chin, though, but this isn't severe prognathicism in the mouth. And one way to tell if you have it is get a ruler or some straight edge and put it on your nose and then on your, on your chin at the same time. And if, if it touches your lips, that doesn't necessarily mean you have prognathicism, but hominids like Neanderthal and prior species, the farther you go back, the more you have it. Okay, this is 70%, 80%, 90%, 100%, full Neanderthal bun in the back of the skull. Look at the cheekbones, underneath the underside of the cheekbone. That's almost a straight line going back. And watch as it morphs in between the human. See that? Look at the difference. What's happening? The brain's actually getting bigger, but it's the forehead getting shorter on the Neanderthal and getting taller in the human. But the brain actually gets bigger as far as cubic centimeters, milliliters, in the Neanderthal. The eye sockets get bigger. The whole face gets longer. The nose the nasal opening gets bigger. From the side, it's definitely a pronounced brow ridge. 
prognathicism in the teeth, the teeth come forward and the mouth comes forward, and then kind of a receding chin to no chin. They say it has no chin, but that's something underneath the teeth, that's a, some semblance of a chin. But one of the areas is the nose from the side. Look at that bridge to the nose. What do you think that looked like in an actual Neanderthal? They draw and they sculpt Neanderthals in their reconstructions, giving it a big giant nose, but it looks like, look at the straight edge on that. That would be like a hook nose. Even in humans, when you, when you have bones that look like that, nasal bones that look like that, the nose doesn't come straight forward. It starts to slope down after that. That's like a Roman nose, or what they call an aquiline nose. That's like a European nose. If you look at American Indians, even though they're have Asian ancestry, they have Roman aquiline noses like Europeans. I'm going to uh, reconstruct this in another video with flesh, and I'm going to stay within the realm of the possible, but instead of making the Neanderthal a sluggish, stupid looking creature, what if it looked cool? And that's what I'll do in a future video. Even in a video I did over a year ago, I made an illustration of a Neanderthal and I kind of based it on the, the French rugby player called Sebastian Chabal who kind of has that brow ridge. So why can't you modify something like that, apply it to a Neanderthal being faithful to the bone structure, but creating a look that may be just as real as anything the past or present reconstructionists have done. So I'll be morphing, quote, celebrities or politicians into Neanderthals for starters in future videos.